glory this morning and we praise and we honor you for you are great and you are greatly to be praised let us go to the throne of grace this morning as we approach let us go low with a humble heart and a thankful heart because he has given us life this morning this truly is a day that you have made and we are rejoicing and we are glad in it father we pray oh god that you will touch every person that is watching this live stream now I pray, Father, that you minister to them, minister to their hearts, minister to their needs. I pray for those who are not well in their bodies that you will bring healing to them. Bring restoration, O oh God, and revival like never before. I thank you, O oh God, for touching even the workers, O oh Lord, that are on the front line. I pray that you will encourage them. Lift their spirits, O oh God. Give them a spirit of hope, God, and an expectation as they look to you, knowing that you're a God that you will answer and you will supply their every need. Father, I pray that you touch the man of God as he comes today. I pray that the spirit of excellence will always be his portion. That, Father, he comes with understanding and wisdom and the fire of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you cover him, God. Surround him with a hedge of protection. Send your angels even now, God, to keep watch over him and his family. I thank you, Lord, that he is a man of God, that he is a shepherd, that he leads us, oh God, beside still waters. That, Father, the food that we eat is nourishing to our bodies. But I pray also that there is an awakening that is sent out as the word speaks to our hearts. Let it be a transforming word, oh God, that will be able to encourage someone else. That will be able to bless someone else. That will be able to minister to someone else. So that their lives can be transformed and renewed. And so we thank you for what you're about to do today. We thank you for your rhema word. We thank you, Lord, for your word is quick and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword and it pierces the dividing of son of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Lord, have your way. Speak to us now. Open up our ear gates. Open up our eyes and let us see you in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Elder and Sister Allen, we missed you all, but be of good courage. God has everything under control, and this too shall pass. God bless you. Praise the Lord Calvary. I miss you all. I'm longing to see you again, but I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. He's going to do a quick work. Be ready because people around you are going to come and ask you, what can I do to be saved? You just tell them, oh, the Lord, pick you up and turn you around and save you and direct them to Calvary because truly that is the way to God. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Calvary. My name is Janae Bruce, and I'm just here to say that I miss you all, and I hope to see you all soon. Have a happy Sunday and enjoy the service. Hello, Calvary. Hi. This is Mary. And the day. This is Katai, and I'm Simone. <laughs> we just want to say that we miss you more than you'll ever know. And can't wait to be reunited with you. Until then, stay safe. Bye. Bye. Greetings. We are the Tomlinson, Lexi, Brittany, Brother Wayne, and we do miss you. Can't wait for us to be together again in the sanctuary, worshiping and greeting each other. God bless you, and have a blessed day. Praise the Lord, Calvary. I'm Joanne McKenzie, and I'm Kalise McKenzie. We miss you. Be well. Be encouraged in the word of God. God, God bless. bless. Hi, my name is Tracy. And I'm Roshane. Through this difficult time, we know God is going to bring us through this. We can't wait to see you all again. Bye. Stay, Stay safe. safe. Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Wayne Antella. I pray everyone and their families are doing great, even in these harsh times. And I pray that we'll be able to see each other again sooner rather than later. I miss you all, and I hope to see you very, very soon. 
Praise the Lord Calvary and welcome to another Facebook live service. We are so excited to have you here and we hope you have done your check-in at 1025. Right now is a good time to like, comment, and share and start your watch party. For all of you who have signed on to Facebook for the first time, Miss G, I see you. Brother Neville, Sister Barbara, welcome. All the elders, we see you and we thank everyone for tuning in. Right after today's service, we would like you to join our Zoom gathering. You know that the church still gathers. So if your last name starts with an A through N, you join one call and those who are M through Z, you're on the other call. And you should see that information on the screen. Calvary Kids Ministry is still gathering as well. Ages 3 to 12 will be meeting via Zoom at one o'clock. Additionally, we are steadfast in prayer. Our prayer line will be open 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday for you to join us in prayer. And our young adult group, the Transformed Generation, also known as TTG, will be praying on Zoom Monday through Fridays at five o'clock. The ladies have their call and the men have theirs. So tune in for those. Amen. And our youth group Exodus meets each Friday at 8 p.m. for an exciting time of fellowship. That's ages 12 to 18. So you can join those Zoom gatherings for a great time with our young people. I can't wait to see you all on Tuesday for our Kingdom Synergy Movement service at 8 p.m. God bless you.
about imagination, everything that I taught us about the knowledge of God. We won! Against cancer! Against diabetes! Against suicide! Against depression!
Praise the Lord again, everyone. It's so happy to be in your homes one more time. This is indeed the day that the Lord hath made, and we have come together to rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works towards the children of men. I don't know how you feel, but I honestly am grateful that I'm alive again. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that God kept me one more time. Amen. And, and to those that are grieving and missing loved ones, we are praying for you. I lost a precious dear friend last week and it touched my heart. And I'm just asking God to cover us. We need to be covered by the blood of the Lord and to trust him. Amen. Why don't we just go to God in prayer before we receive the offering and offer up a prayer of comfort. Father, we ask you today that you will indeed comfort the hearts of those that are mourning. Lord, you who stood by Lazarus' grave and felt the pain of loss and wept, we ask you now to stretch your hands across our country, across the world, and comfort those that are mourning, those that are grieving, we pray for those that are sick and fighting this virus, that you'll strengthen them and give them the victory. We thank you for our members who have overcome it and are back on their feet and ready to give you praise and glory. We ask you now you do the same for many others. Thank you for a governor. Thank you for a mayor. Thank you, dear God, for a president, the congressmen and the senators. Anoint them and give them wisdom as they continue to lead us through this pandemic. We give you praise now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise our God. We're going to give you the opportunity one more time to worship God in giving. If you like to give electronically by your debit card, you can call the office. They'll be able to help you to do those transactions. If you're already aware how to give by the website, go to our website, www.cometocalvary.com. Or you can do give by the app. And they're also streaming across for you a way to give by text. We thank you for your faithfulness to the work of God. And we're believing God that he'll continue to bless you. And he'll provide for your house as you provide for his house. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To all our friends and our families. Amen. Around the world. We invite you to join in. Amen. On Tuesday night for a Bible class. We're expecting a great move of God in that service. You wouldn't want to miss it. 8 p.m., we'll be back on the air teaching and looking into the word of the Lord to hear what God has to say to us. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we servants will arise and build. May the Lord bless every giver and every gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.
And praise the Lord again, everyone. I'm trusting that you are adjusting to this new normal and that you're enjoying the ministry of the word of the Lord online and the services. It, it takes a lot of effort to do this. And I really want to pause this morning to thank Kimani, Minister Malcolm, Elder Stewart, Sean, the praise team, amen, for what they're doing to make this happen, to make sure the word gets to you every Sunday morning and every Tuesday night, amen. Right where you are, can you give them a hand clap of appreciation? I thank them for helping us to get this done, amen. We're going straight into the word today, and our text this morning comes from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 10, 18 verses 10 and 11. Proverbs 18 verses 10 and 11. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The rich man's wealth is a strong city and has a high wall in his own deceit. The rich man's wealth is a strong city and as a high wall in his own deceit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your call, and we thank you for your anointing. We pray now that your glory will rest upon us and upon those that will hear your word today. We pray for your will to be done around the world and for your kingdom to come. Wherever your gospel is being preached today and your name is being declared, manifest your kingdom. We give you praise for hearing us and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm excited about this word today. Amen. Last week we spent time in covering the six cities of refuge that God told Joshua to establish. And we found those six cities in Joshua chapter 20. These cities of refuge were the place where the guilty could escape for safety from the hands of those who sought their lives. The Bible says if they had made it into the city and remained there until the high priest that was officiating the time when they ran into it, if they stayed there until that, as long as that high priest was alive, they would be safe. So just to recap what we talked about last week real quickly, we found out the first city was Kadesh. And Kadesh means holy and sacred. I just want to pause and give God praise that there's always a safe, holy place. There's a safe and sacred place. A holy God has a holy place for his people. And this holy God requires that his people be holy as well. First Peter chapter 1 says, But as he which had called you is holy... So be he holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be he holy, for I am holy. The second city is Shechem. And Shechem means shoulder. In, when, in scriptures, shoulder always means government. 
And I want to thank God again that there's a safe place with good government that our God is carving out for us. In times like these, we can definitely see the need for good government. The prophet Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, amen, and peace, there shall be no end. I'm glad today that I know there's a place in God where his people can find good government. The third city mentioned in Joshua 20, the third city of refuge, is called Hebron. And Hebron means fellowship. There is a place, a safe place where everyone can enjoy fellowship. A safe place where people are caring and people are sharing. First John 1 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Thank God there's a place where we can have fellowship. And even though we are not together, thank God we can still have fellowship. Amen. The fourth city was called Beza. And Beza means fortified or stronghold. There is a safe place that our God has provided for us. Amen. Where we can be safe where we can be fortified and protected from the enemy. There's a place where we are edged in, a place where we are sealed off, a place where we are protected from the onslaught of the enemy. Job wrote in, in the Bible writes in Job 1 verse 9, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hath not thou made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance and his increase in the land. What is Job saying to us? The enemy was recognize that there is a beast of amen place for all of God's people where God protects us protects our children, and protects our substance. In times like these, I want to remind you, there is a safe place for all of us where we can be protected by Almighty God. The fifth city was called Ramoth, and Ramoth means height or exalted. Amen. There is a safe place that promotes growth and progress. A safe place where people are encouraged and challenged to maximize their full potential in God. A place where they are taught, amen, that they are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. A place where they are reminded, amen, as Paul said to the Ephesian church. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm preaching to a people today and I'm reminding you that when you run into the city that God has made for you, amen, God ensures that you're elevated. God ensures that you are promoted. God ensures that you are, you are raised up. Amen. And Paul says, raised up far above all principality, far above all power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world that is to come. And he has put all things under your feet and gave it to the head over all things, even the church. Aren't you glad this morning that your God has elevated you? Placed you and allowed you access into Ramoth where you never remain the same. You are lifted higher. Praise our God. The sixth city we talked about last week was a city called Golan. And Golan means joy. Thank God there's a place in God where it's not just bad news, but there's also good news. And good news that makes the heart glad and causes us to rejoice. A place of joy. I preach today that your home will become a Golan. And God will fill your lives with joy. Fill your family with joy. Fill your surroundings with joy. Amen. Praise God. Outside, all we're hearing is bad news. 
it's depressing. And if you're not careful, it will leave you hopeless. But there is a place of joy where the saints of God can say, although... It is not what we want it to be, yet we still got to praise. It doesn't matter what's going on, we still got to praise. Although the prophet said, the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall be cut off that there be no meat. The flocks shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. Yet I will rejoice. The business might be closed down. I might have to lie Line up, amen, to get some food from the supermarket, but I'm still giving God praise. The money might be funny, but I still got my praise. I'm just wondering if there's anybody out there that you still got joy. Just hit the like button, hit the love button, make a comment, and let the devil know I still got my joy. You might have shut down the economy, but you have not shut down my praise. You might have closed down the school, but you have not Amen. Close down my praise. You might have closed down the access to the sanctuary, but I can make a sanctuary right here and give God joy. Have you discovered, saints, that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Hallelujah. I just love to turn on, amen, my playlist and start dancing in my bedroom. And the same presence I feel in the sanctuary is the same presence I feel in my room. In fact, I kind of feel more at ease and have more liberty to give God praise the way I want to. I'm not concerned about what anybody thinks. I can walk around and shout. I can walk around and dance and give God praise uninhabited by anybody else. I dare you to give God praise and express the joy that God has put in your life today. The city called Golan, the city of joy. That's a quick recap to bring you up to date. So, so we found out in the Old Testament, in Joshua 20, God gave them six cities for them to find refuge in. But now, those cities are no more. And to the child of God today, especially in times like these, the question that I feel is being asked, amen, that I want to answer is, where can I run to when I need a place of refuge? Where can I hide when I need a place of shelter? Amen. I'm glad Solomon gives us the answer. He says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous runneth into it and is safe. The cities, the six cities do not exist right now. They're not applicable right now, but there is a name that you can run into and find safety. Hallelujah. And can I suggest that this name is better than those six cities combined together. I'm glad this morning that God is moving things away and replacing it with better things. Preach Bishop. Hallelujah. I don't care what has been removed. I believe what when it's removed, better is coming. Amen. Better cities are coming. A, a stronger city is coming. A stronger and lasting city is coming. I'm happy today that there is a better place of refuge. In fact, the Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Hebrews that when we work with God, everything is better. Hallelujah. We have Jesus, Paul said, who is better than the angels. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1 and verse 4. And being made so much better than the angels as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I don't know how you feel about it, but would you rather have Jesus or angels? <laughs> I thank God I got angels, but I'm even more happier I got Jesus on my side. And he's better than any angel. Say amen. In the book of Hebrews 11, 40. Paul says, and have you provide, God has provided for us better things. In order for us, for us to have better things, then the old things have to be taken away. Can I encourage the saints to stop mourning over the things that God are removing and start praising God that better things are coming? I feel like prophesying to everybody, listen to me. You're not losing anything. Better is on its way. You are not going to end up, amen, with something less when this is all over. You're going to end up with better. You're going to end up with better. Amen. Paul says it's a better hope. 
<laughs> a better testament, a better covenant, better promises, glory to God. Everything, amen, that God deals with, he takes us from one level to another, from faith to to fate, from glory to glory, from victory to victory, it gets better. It gets better. A better resurrection, a better country. Everything that God replaces in your life is going to be better. Ha write down what you lost. Write down what you're losing and then begin to look for better to come your way. Hallelujah. I decree to you today. I declare to you today that better is on its way. Better for your children. Better for your business. Hallelujah. Better for the church. Glory to God. I want to slap myself a high five because better is on the way. You won't get me sitting down looking depressed because I, my eyes understand. I understand from the word of God better is on the way. To every preacher listening to me, it's going to get better. To every minister listening to me, it's going to get better. To every child listening to me, it's going to get better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in our text this morning, Proverbs 18.10, amen, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Let's break it down for a while. The name of the Lord. Let's deal with the name of the Lord. What does the Old Testament mean when it says the name of the Lord? First, let's understand in scriptures when we talk about name, Amen. We are, in essence, declaring and prophesying the destiny and the future of the person who carries the name. Name in scripture is very important. Hallelujah. So we are not just talking about any Lord. We're talking about the Lord. And we are trying to discover what his name means and how his name can allow us to find safety. Very interestingly, in Genesis chapter 35, verse 15 through 18, we find Rachel getting ready to give birth. And in the midst of giving birth, the Bible says she went through travail and hard labor. And she died in the process of giving birth. But just before she died, amen, a boy child was born. And she named him Benohai, which means um, son of sorrow. Hallelujah. But before, amen, that name stuck, his father turned around and named him Benjamin, son of my right hand. Can I say to somebody today, I don't care what you're going through, how hard the time is. Be careful how you name your situation. Be careful what name you put on it. Don't let the, let the situation pressure you to say something that you're going to read regret i feel like overriding all the negative things that's coming out of the mouth of the saints right now because our word create our world saints you better be careful what you say when you're going through difficult times when it looks like god has turned his back on you when it looks like you're calling and god is unanswering amen do not make the mistake to say the wrong thing do not call what can become a blessing amen a sorrow do not call what god is working for your good something bad you need to speak by faith he's not the son of sorrow he's the son of my right hand he's going to be a help <laughs> he's going to be a warrior he's going to come up to help me conquer my enemies i'm preaching to somebody to tell you this is working for your good and when it's all over you're going to be stronger <laughs> you're going to be wiser and bless god you're going to get better hallelujah tell your neighbor don't open your mouth and say the wrong thing if you can't say the right thing don't say anything at all hallelujah amen i'm reminded as i talk about that what happened to zachariah zachariah in the book of luke was officiating in the sanctuary during his course and the bible said an angel appeared to him and told him zachariah you and elizabeth are going to have a baby <laughs> you're going to have a baby in your old age i feel like putting the mic down i feel a unction right there i'm trying to tell somebody you did not get what you believe in god for all these years it doesn't mean that god has closed the book on you there is a promise yet to be fulfilled in 
in your life and you're not going to die until you see God perform his word towards you. Hold on, my God, by faith and trust God. When you think it's over, that's when God will show up. So he, the angel showed up to Zechariah in the temple and told him you're going to have a baby. And Zechariah could not believe him. So the angel made him dumb. <laughs> and when he came out, he couldn't speak. It's better you shut your mouth than to speak against what God has for you. I feel encouraged, my God. God will not even let you get in the way of what he promised to perform for you. Sometimes he has to shut you down to bring to pass what he said. Praise God. Could this shut down be God's way of saying to us I've got something better coming and if I don't shut you down you will talk yourself out of it I feel a shout right here Lord I believe you help my unbelief my God soon months pass and Elizabeth conceived and the Bible said amen that when she conceived my God then amen they decided to name the baby after Zachariah and amen and, and, and Elizabeth says no his name shall be John and, and the people around said but nobody in the family is named John they looked at Zachariah and Zachariah said give me a piece of paper he wrote down the baby shall be called John and the minute he agreed with what God said his mouth opened up again I need 50 folks out there I need 500 out there that will agree with what God says and open your mouth and start giving God praise Hallelujah! The vision is for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. And though it tarries, wait for it. I don't care what's going on. If God said it, he is going to make it good. I found out for myself, he's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Anything he said, he's well able to perform it. All my appointed days, therefore, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Be careful what you say, how you name your situation in difficult times. Hallelujah. But, but, but Solomon says, the name of the Lord. Amen. And when Moses was told by God to go to the people, Moses says, who should I tell them sent me? And the Lord says, I am that I am. This Lord that I'm talking about, he is the I am that I am. What do you mean, Bishop? He's anything and everything you ever want him to be. Whatever you need him to become, that's what he is. He is the I am that I am. He is your sustainer. He is your keeper. He is your healer. He's a friend that stick it closer than a brother. This Lord is the I am that I am. Hallelujah. The angel said, thou shalt call his name Jesus. This Lord has a name. The name of the Lord is Jesus. Amen. The name of the Lord, amen, is Jesus. Jesus means Savior. It means salvation. Isaiah 9, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Hallelujah. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting father. And the prince of peace. His name shall be called Jesus. Wonderful. Understand therefore what Solomon is saying to us in Proverbs 18. He's telling us that when you call the name of our God, you're calling on the power of God. You're calling on the character of God. And you're calling on all the attributes of Almighty God. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he had known my name. When you know the name of God, you discover his name brings deliverance. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Hallelujah. If you know his name and you call him, deliverance is yours. Amen. His name is a saving name. And it shall come to pass, says the scriptures, that whoso shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Neither is there salvation, Acts 4.12 says, in any other. 
For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm glad I know the name of the Lord. If you know his name, you know the source for healing. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick my God if you know the name of the Lord you got healing at your disposal hallelujah if you know the name of the Lord my God you can get help our help is in the name of the Lord which made heaven and earth says David in Psalm 124 you have a helper if you know the name of the Lord your God and if you know the name of the Lord you have the opportunity to be baptized in that name and why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord if you don't know that name I'm telling you that that name is Jesus. Sometimes you can't call for healer. Sometimes you can't say helper. If you just say Jesus, you got everything, amen, that you need in just that one name. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul says to us that whatever we do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord. So that name, my God, when you call it, it becomes and releases the I am factor in your life. He becomes whatever you want him to be, a deliverer, a savior, a healer, a helper, and a baptizer, not only in water, but with fire. Somebody call that name. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Wherefore God had highly exalted him and has given him a name that's above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord so when Proverbs 18 says the name of the Lord is trying to tell you sit down and think about what you need what you need to escape from what you need safety from and when you call that name you better believe that name will release to you whatever you need hallelujah the name of the Lord hallelujah is a strong tower let's break it down what does he mean when he says strong tower in my research it has two meanings strong tower number one it's telling us amen when we when we have the name there is safety strong tower amen a place of safety a place of protection a hiding place a shelter a refuge a shade a shielding hallelujah that's what it means when it says strong tower his name is a strong tower. It's impassable, impregnable. My God, the enemy can't penetrate, my God. When you are in that name, you are protected, shielded in a place where the enemy can't get to you. Oh God, I wish we were together because I feel like praising God right now. I wish I had somebody help me jump and shout because where we are in God, this strong tower, the enemy can't get to us he may try but he can my god it's a place where the weary can find rest a place where those that are being pursued by the enemy can run for their soul a place where you can hide from the enemy with assurance that he can find you i love that chorus you can't catch me again you held me down for a very long time but now that i'm gone you're coming after me but you can't catch me again i'm in a city i'm in a strong tower i'm in a place of refuge where you can't get to me you can't get to my stuff you can't get to my children you can't get to my mind you can't get to my business i feel protected in a strong tower created by the name of the lord my god amen open your mouth and say i'm in a strong tower a place where the enemy cannot have access to me hallelujah to god amen the lord is my light 
in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, 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 even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Oh, I feel a praise right there. When the enemy comes, my God, they stumble and fell. They don't even reach me and they start falling. They start falling. They don't even touch me. They start falling. They st oh, you want to tell the devil, you're going to drop dead before you touch me. Touch not the Lord. Anointed and do his prophet no harm. Though at host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war shall rise up against me in this will I be confident one thing one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time <laughs> In the time like these, in the time of trouble, in the time of COVID-19, 2020, April 26, he shall hide me. Oh yes, he shall hide me in a strong tower. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and set me up on a rock where the enemy can reach me. Oh, you ought to celebrate God that there is a strong tower. This name that you can run into and find safety. Isaiah 39, 9, amen, says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Amen. Psalm 32, 7, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Can I preach to the saints and tell them you are in a strong place. And God is going to preserve you from trouble. If a man, a man shall be a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest. As rivers of waters in a dry place. A shadow of a rock in a weary land. God is providing a strong tower for you to hide. That's the first meaning of strong tower. The second meaning we discover for the word tower, it also means a pulpit. It means a restroom. It means a place. <laughs> Amen. And some translator says it's a box up on which the preacher stands. <laughs> oh my God. It's a place where the book is open. <laughs> and what the word of the Lord is preached or read. <laughs> my God. What are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying the name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> it's a place <laughs> where you can assemble yourself <laughs> and God will lift up somebody <laughs> to open up the word <laughs> and bring a word of deliverance. <laughs> a word, my God, to set the captive free. It's a place where instruction and guidance, <laughs> where his word is preached. <laughs> and when the word is heard, <laughs> it brings faith and dispels fear. <laughs> oh God, so when God says that my name is a strong tower. He's trying to tell you, I will assemble you together. I'll gather my saints and I'll put them in a position where somebody will get up in the midst of all that's going on with the enemy on the right and the enemy on the left and COVID that you can't even see. I'll get them open up the word and start preaching and fear got to go because my word, the entrance of it gives light. I'm trying to tell somebody, God is going to make sure there is a place where his word is declared to dispel fear and bring faith. Matt, can I take a praise break right here? Help me praise God for the word. Put your hands together for the word of the Lord that comes to us. They might close the church door, but the word can't be stopped. It's still being preached. Say glory to God. Hallelujah. The word, the word, the word, the word. When his word.
his herd. It brings faith and dispels fear. When we understand the power of the word, it cleanses. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It cleanses that word. Hallelujah. By hitting my heart that I might not sin, it prevents you from sinning. My God. When you take heed to it, it cleanses. When you hide it, 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 it prevents sin, my Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 119.15 says so when, when you have his word and you go through affliction, it comforts. <laughs> it gives you cheer. It restores your joy. And it quickens you. What does that mean? It makes give you a pep. It gives you a step up. It lifts you out of the depression state. That word goes in and gives you hope again. My God, somebody ought to feel the quickening right now. You're not going to die. He's going to quicken you and bring you a and a word to your house a word to your situation get up my God and live and declare the goodness of almighty God when you have his word it brings hope when you have his word it guides you thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path in times like these we need the word to guide our feet lead us in the right place to avoid the enemy's attack things to kill and destroy and bring pain and affliction but the word will guide you it will tell you don't go left go right don't go out at all say yeah the word has a way of directing you my God when you have his word, it gives light and understanding. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall abide forever. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So, so when the Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, it is saying not only will God protect you and put you in a safe place, but he sent a word, create a, a rostrum, a pulpit, a box for declaration and preaching of the word to bring faith to deliver you and that your actions end up pleasing God. I feel a praise right there. I feel a praise. Thank God for the word. Everything. Everything. That God promised you. His word is going to keep on working. Until it comes to pass. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord. Is a strong tower. The righteous run it therein. Hallelujah. The righteous run it therein. The righteous run it therein. I got to hurry. But I got stuck right there. When I was preparing. The righteous run it therein. A quick question for you why does the righteous need to run for safety amen amen back in the old testament pattern it was only the guilty that needed to run to find safety but when but when solomon writes to us about the one running in the name of the lord and find a strong tower he says it's the righteous that is running so the prophet is trying to tell us, amen, being righteous, therefore, has nothing to do with your actions. It has nothing to do with your guilt. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Because all my righteousness, according to Isaiah, is as filter rags. Therefore, Paul is trying to explain to us that my actions, my deeds are are not the things that make me righteous. When I dig a little further, I found out according to James and Paul that righteousness, my God, is something that is imputed because of one's belief. Preach Bishop Abraham James 2 believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God Romans 4 11 amen the righteous might be that righteousness rather might be imputed unto them also so you are not made righteous 
solely upon your actions, but righteousness is a gift. Righteousness has to be imputed. It has to be accredited. It has to be attributed. It has to be assigned. It has to be ascribed. Let me say it again. Righteousness is not based on solely upon our actions. Righteousness is something that God imputes. It's a gift. It's something accredited. Something attributed. Something assigned. Something ascribed, my God. Amen. Philippians chapter 3. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith, the righteousness which is of God by faith. In other words, you can work out and create your own righteousness. We say self-righteousness. But God is not saying that the self-righteous runs into his name and finds safety. He's saying the righteous, the righteous, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, who understands that if God says something like Abraham, they just got to believe it. And God will take their belief in, in their believe in what he said and said I'll impute righteousness to you and such a person can run in and find safety can I say it my own way my God the righteous here then is the man and the woman the boy and the girl who fully understands that they don't deserve anything from almighty God they are aware had it not been for the Lord who was on their side my God they would have been swallowed up covered up buried and forgotten but God who's rich in mercy God who gives grace to the humble has allowed them access into a safe place they don't deserve mercy they should have had judgment they are guilty and they should not be acquitted but God dropped the charges God says I know what you deserve but I'm going to love you anyhow I'm going to give you grace anyhow why? because you dare to believe what I said you are like Abraham left your father's country you left your kindred you left your idols you left your, your homeland you walked away from everything and you started to look for a city whose builder and maker is God. You didn't know where you're going but you took me at my word. You trusted me with all of your heart and you did not lean onto your own understanding. Therefore Abraham, I'm giving you righteousness. I'm giving you my holiness. I'm giving you my nature. Somebody give God praise if you are hearing me and you know the only reason why you're still here is because God has been double good to you give God praise and start running and tell the devil I'm not stop running until I'm safe in the arms of almighty God I'm not going to stop running on my God just because he took me out of debt I'm not going to stop running because he healed my body I'm not going to stop running because he filled me with the Holy Ghost I'm going to keep on running until I make it to glory say yeah heaven is my home that's the safest place the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous righteous runneth you can't stop running now you gotta keep on running you gotta forget the things which are behind and keep on pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God keep running until you hear him say welcome welcome my child well done don't stop now hallelujah Amen. Seeing therefore, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us therefore lay aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us and run with patience 
The rain set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep on running, saints. Keep on running, saints. Keep on running. Keep on running. Heaven is your goal. Jesus is the mark. He is the finish line. Keep on running. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You are not safe because you found refuge on this side. You're only safe when you find refuge on this side and refuge on the other side. Refuge here is temporal. Refuge over there is eternal. You're not safe on this side of heaven. You're only safe when you get to that side. Keep on running and let the name of God deliver you. Let the name of God sustain you. Let the name of God bring you safely. Amen. On the other shore, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on running. Praise God. Lift your hands, bow your heads, hold your neighbor's hand, do something, and let's pray. Father, now is there a salvation nearer than when we first believe. I pray that you will strengthen the saints and they'll keep on running and that the desire for safety is not just on this side of the sun but their desire is for eternal safety on the other side hallelujah because everything here is going to be destroyed and only those things that you secure are going to make it on the other side. Help them to run, God, and not stop running until they reach the goal, which is to see you and live with you forever. Save today. Heal today. Deliver today. Send your word and build faith today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Call the church office. 516-292-3685. 516-292-3685. Let's talk about how you need to put that name in, apply that name in your life. Let's talk about salvation. What you need to be saved. What you need to make sure that you're calling and your election is sure. How to, how to find instruction to keep running until you know you're hitting the goal. In Jesus' name we pray. Until Tuesday night, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and grant you peace. We love you. We miss you and hope to see you soon. If not on this side, certainly on the other side. Hallelujah.
everybody like you, Jesus. Angels, they bow before you. Heaven and earth adore you. The earth is filled with your glory. You're the mighty God. 